Hello everyone! In this screencast presentation, we show the design and implementation of a wireless sensor network for agriculture irrigation system control. The outline of this presentation will include the motives that lead us to develop this product and what is the current state of the art. Next, we'll explain how our protocol was designed to best solve this problem, finishing with the simulations and implementation of the product in the GN5168 dongles and the obtained results. Do you know that agriculture actually represents 70% of water consumption in the world? With the growth of world population and the increment in food production in the developing countries and the advent of bioproducts, this number will increase. There is an urgent need to optimize agriculture by using wireless sensor networks to better monitor crops and increase the yield. The use of sensors in agriculture started in small-scale greenhouses with the use of RFID tags. However, this required checking each sensor directly, turning it impractical for large-scale productions. Nowadays, the uprising of low-cost and power-consumption wireless nodes allows the development of large-scale and self-sustained networks. Our project aims to develop a network such as this, focusing on the development of its communication protocol. Next up, we will be talking about the project requirements of the node, the whole network, and the functionality of the project. Coming to the next slide, you can see we'll be deploying a large network of over 80 to 150 nodes spread across a certain area. Since these nodes are in such high quantity, they should be small and cost effective. They shall be easy to deploy as it could be deployed and installed by, let's say, technicians who are not really engineers. They should be easy to install and it must be a maintenance free network. These nodes must have the capability of being added to the network without any user intervention. In terms of power, they shall be active for one year. The node is equipped with an 18650 battery and a solar panel. The solar panel charges the 18650 battery. What are we measuring over here, over here with the node? We are measuring soil temperature and humidity. And in terms of area, the nodes are separated by 20 to 40 meters. Right, so the physical layer takes care of modulating and demodulating the transmitted data. A lot of aspects had to be taken into account when deciding on the physical layer. Since we're building a wireless sensor network, most important are energy efficiency and scalability. We chose IEEE 802.15.4 for this project. This has two major reasons. The first one being that this is an industry-wide standard and is widely documented and supported. This means there is lots of previous work to take advantage from. The second reason is that IEEE 802.15.4 uses the 2.4 GHz band, which is un unlicensed. Yet, the 868 MHz band is also unlicensed, but would provide a lower data rate in exchange for a longer range. Since the nodes are spaced only 20 to 40 meters, this would yield no direct advantage over using 2.4 GHz. Also, higher data rates mean lower transmission times, which means lower energy consumption. Lastly, for the modulation scheme, we chose OQPSK. It has been the MAC layer uses a CSMA based mechanism where it senses the medium before sending and it doesn't need a coordinator. Since we are implementing this project in Contiki, Contiki provides an RDC functionality. RDC stands for radio duty cycling. We plan to turn on the node once every three hours and the rest of the time among in that three hour, the node will be sleeping. With RDC functions, we can do this easily. So for 2.966 hours, the node will be sleeping and the rest, point, rest of 0 0.034 hours, the node will wake up, collect the data, and flood it in the network. The network layer is responsible for packet forwarding, which includes routing them through intermediate nodes. In our solution, flooding was used. There were several mechanisms of reducing network traffic, forwarding, gossiping, and package aggregation. Let's see an example of the system working. Here, we have a satellite photo of a set of circular agricultural fields. Choosing one, we can analyze what happens in a part of the network implemented on it. Here we show an example distribution of 9 nodes plus a sink. One of the nodes in the network wakes up. Node 7 wakes up and senses the medium. 
Note starts sending his information. Nodes 5 and 8 receives the data and with a probability of gossiping of 60% add their sensor data to the package. Only node 5 will rebroadcast the package according to the probability. This procedure will repeat continuously starting in other nodes during 90 seconds. In this way we implement a communication of 1 to n to 1, floating the network and then using mechanisms to try to reduce the number of transmissions. So, this is the general algorithm of transmitting the data from the nodes to the sink. All of the nodes run it during the 90 seconds. So, this is our full protocol stack, starting by using GN5168 radio, that works on 2.4 GHz, the MAC layer, that is dividing duty cycle to implement the quick switch on and off of the radio, and, on top of it, the CSMA protocol. For the network layer, we use a flooding mechanism, improved with gossiping to try to reduce the number of retransmissions. And, at the top of it, our application, the NES project. In order to get a good idea of the behavior of the network, we did both simulations and real implementation. In this slide, you can observe the setup we used. As you can see, we chose to use a circular setup and simulated this in the open source software Guja. In this network, the sync node is in the middle. So here you can see the setups we tested. In real implementation, a range of 65 over 90 meters in combination with a PRR of 70% is realistic. Next to this, we also tested less ideal situations with a range of 45 over 60 meters. Since these simulations are quite intense and our hardware couldn't keep up, just the inner part of the network, you saw a few slides back, was simulated. However, this can still be used to say something about the full network. Next, we look at the results. First of all, notice that the settings that were assumed to be ideal are very close to the less ideal setups. There's a difference of only 5% max. This can be explained by a high PRR also introducing a high rate of retransmissions of data causing more collisions and therefore not necessarily being more efficient. You can see that the case where the PRR is 100% and the range is 65 over 90, the reliability is 100%. However, all these retransmissions would cost a tremendous amount of energy, so this outlet's 5% of reliability would come at a large price. Next, we look only at the realistic situation, where the PRR is 70%. Again, we see the difference caused by using different settings is minimal. Finally, we tested what would be the effect of nodes dying. To hurt the network the most, 
and now it's close to the sink should die. As you can see in the graph here, we removed one node in the first ring and two in the second. For calculating the reliability, we only considered the nodes that were still working. So, if three nodes die, but the other 37 are still transmitting their data to the sink, we would still consider this as a reliability of 100%. This is important to notice when looking at the graphs. Now, here you can see the comparison between a fully intact network and a network where three nodes die. The difference is getting bigger, as you might notice. However, a very large part of the network is still able to transmit its data to the sink within the first 90 seconds. So, we still consider this network reliable. In this slide, we will be talking about the energy consumption of the node. The energy consumption of the node is the sum of the energy spent by the node where it is online and the energy spent by the node where it is offline. Here you can see a timeline of three hours. The region marked in red is when the node is asleep and the region marked in green, which is 90 seconds, is when the node wakes up, gathers data, floods the network and goes back to sleep. The next slide gives an equation for the energy spent by the node when the node is online, which equals the energy spent by the node when it's transmitting plus the energy spent by the node when it is receiving. Next slide gives us a brief idea about the power consumption when the cost of probability is 0.6. As you can see, when the PRR is at 70% and we have a transmission and interference range of 65 meters and 90 meters respectively, we are spending 154 microwatt hours only on the network. Adding the energy spent on soil moisture, we are getting 167 microwatt hours with a working voltage of 3.3 .3 volts. This is the best case scenario where the network can be operated for 90 seconds, seconds and the data from all the nodes reach the sync node within the 90 seconds. Next up, we'll be talking about the charging time of the battery. This is when the battery is at 0% SOC. Well, that is not a general case because when battery manufacturers like Samsung SDI or LG Chem are selling all these batteries, these cells are generally at 60 to 70 or 80 percent of SOC already. But just in case we are starting from at say 0 percent SOC, the best case scenario, the best lighting conditions, we can get 3 watts of power from the solar panel. We need to consider MBPT losses, which can be an average of 12.15 percent, and we get a power of 2.64 watts after the MBPT losses. Then we have a charging time of 3.78 hours. Even in the poorest of lighting condition of 0.9 watts, we have a charging time of 12.62 hours. In this slide, we will be talking about the battery charge and discharge cycle. To the left, we will be seeing a graph which plots the battery SOC on the y-axis versus the time in seconds on the x-axis. During the 90 seconds online time of the node, we start at 100% SOC. At the end of 90 seconds, we end up at 99.6% of SOC. To recharge the same, we spend 0.8 seconds in the worst case scenario, which is the poorest lighting condition. On the graph to your right, we are plotting the battery discharge overnight. We have the battery SOC as usual on the y-axis, and on the x-axis we have hours instead of seconds. Here we are talking about a 12-hour period where there is no sunlight and the node cannot be recharged. The SOC drops from 100% to 98% in over 12 hours. Even in the worst and the poorest lighting conditions, it takes just 4 seconds to charge it back to 100%. In order to test how does the algorithm behave in real conditions, practical implementation was prepared. 14 USB dongles with NXP Genie chip were used. Okay, so as you can see over here, we are using NXP's uh, JN5168 uh, wireless nodes and we have an indoor implementation of our uh, network over here. So this is a form of a circular grid where these nodes over here are the outermost part of a circle and then we have the inner part of the circle which is the sink over here. So all these nodes will be laid out 
on a farm or a field and you will be translating the data towards the same node over here. The sync node is like a, a gateway which is connected to the internet. So all the nodes over here will be sending the data over um, a flooding mechanism by using some gossiping algorithms. So the network won't be flooded with all the number of transmissions from each and every node. And as I said, we are using these uh, low power JN5168 nodes with a transmit current of uh, 15 milliampers and a receive current of 17.5 uh, milliampers only. And we are using these uh, power banks to just use uh, power up these nodes. And since these are uh, very low power nodes, the power bank uh, switch off after a certain uh, timeout. And that is one of the problems which we are facing right now. But as you can see on these uh, laptops, these laptops are also powering on these nodes. And we have a control screen on the laptop which display all the data which you are receiving from these nodes. So basically we just want to collect two uh, types of data. One is the soil measurement or soil moisture and the soil temperature. And now we are feeding these nodes with uh, random data. And all the nodes are transmitting data towards one single sink. So now uh, we can take all these nodes and put them on the field or the grass outside and do a real-time implementation output. In order to test how does the algorithm behave in real conditions, the implementation was tested on a DOE campus near the Aurora building. The sink was located inside the building. Other nodes were placed on the meadow near the car park. Information generated in each node is transmitted to the sink using the developed protocol. This test was conducted in order to get some grasp of what are the differences between simulations and practical implementation. Okay, so now we are uh, outside and we have three laptops uh, over here. So that is the first layer after the sink. We have one laptop over there and one laptop over there is sitting with the third laptop. So that is like the first wave of communication which is directly connected to the sink, hopefully, which is, by the way, inside. So we have these uh, low power wireless nodes transferring data to the glass over there. And you can see all these plants over here. We have uh, one node over there and a second node over there. So these, let's say, a uh, soil moisture sensor actually connects it to these plants over there. These are uh, transmitting data in real time to the sink. So it's like a multi hop communication. So from the first hop, it goes to the laptop over here, and then the laptop uh, attaches its own data of the own uh, wireless sensor node over there combines all that and sends it inside to the sink which is connected to the internet and then you can analyze all that data and do some awesome data science in the ring of it. And we have nodes spread out uh, all across till the outer road you can see and basically these are kept near the plants just to simulate, uh, not exactly simulate, practically implement it in uh, real time and see some interference if that's happening. Okay, so that's all about it. Thank you. Here we can see that this node is receiving data only from node 10 and 3, uh, but we also receive in some packets data from node 9, which is not uh, directly connected, which is far away over there. Uh, so it means that the network works. Uh, even we see that sometimes node 4 is visible. We observed that even a practical test of such small amount of nodes is problematic. The test showed that simulations are easier and may analyze more scenarios. However, it doesn't take into account factors which appear in the real environment. For example, there are problems with some nodes caused by the unexpected behavior of some power bank. To sum up, our implementation meets the given requirements. The nodes are sending data reliably and are self-sustainable in terms of power consumption. There was implemented the gossiping algorithm with a forwarding probability. The simulations showed that the forwarding probability of 60% is better than the application due to lower power consumption, with still maintained requirements. In the final solution, the proposed node active time for the design network is 90 seconds. 
it's possible to conclude that the outcome of the project is a valid and tested solution to be applied in real agricultural fields.